Hello and welcome to my tutorial on Wohlfahrt Etude number 33. This is an excellent etude for third position because it's in G major so we can use the open G string and D string as drones to help us with intonation. It's a very good etude for third position because you're in third position nearly all the time and the few passages where you go from first to third position you're not actually shifting but you are finding the third position over an open string. That's very important because your hand needs to know where the third position is before you even start working at shifts because otherwise you don't know where your hand is supposed to go. This etude is also very good because it's quite a nice etude. It has sound passages, it has fast passages and it puts the technical things into a musical context. And that's the point of etudes. That's what's most important about etudes. When I was a kid, I always wondered, why do I have to practice all these etudes? Now, after decades of teaching experience, I can tell you the reason you practice etudes is to put a particular technical thing, in this case, third position, into a musical context. Because it's not the same just practicing small, isolated technical exercises and then expecting yourself to be able to do that in a piece. As a bridge between exercises and repertoire, you need the etudes. So that's the point of etudes in general, and the point of this etude is to become very familiar in third position. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this etude, how to practice it, and what to watch out for. I need to add a complete performance video of this at the end of this video in case you find it helpful to just listen to it once or watch me play it once. That can be of help, but I'll add it on the end. Okay, off we go. The beginning is an excellent place to practice it with open string drones to make sure your intonation is completely correct. It's not that easy because you have the open D string and then the first finger G in third position and then you have the open D string again and your finger has to find the exact same G again. That's one of the things you're supposed to practice and learn in this etude. Because it's one thing for a finger to find its place in relationship with another finger which is already down, it's a lot more difficult to find its place basically out of the air because you're playing an open string before. So that's why the drone practice here is very helpful. Now keep the first finger down and then play the top G with the fourth finger as an octave. And then continue with the open D string as a drone. String crossing is double stops for your hand frame, one, four. Play that A with the open A string. And then the D string drone again. That will help you a lot with intonation. Then we go on. And now we have we have the open D string continuously in between the notes that we're playing. That's not that easy, so practice it and listen very carefully to your intonation. The third finger B tends to be too flat often. You can also practice that with the open G string drone. drone if you want.
There it's important to practice the string crossing as double stop for a secure hand position. So basically that's an important part to practice the string crossings in double stops. Now apart from drone practicing and string crossings in double stops, it's important to have a very clear bow division here. So we start with a quarter note and then we have a long note. Whole bow. Use half bow for the quarter notes. And then whole bow. Half bow then. Bow division is very important because only then do you get a good sound. If you use too much bow for the quarter notes and too little bow for the half notes and all that, then you won't get a good sound. And if you're very exact about your bow division, you'll get a lot of security in your right arm. Because if you're exact about your bow division, you're doing exactly the same thing every time you play that bit and that will give you security. Then again, start the upbeat in the middle, whole bow, not so much bow for the eighth notes. That way you do that figure in the bottom half. on top so they're supposed to be shortened the accents on the A do that with a bit of speed of bow now for those double octaves they're a bit nasty what you do is give yourself time, get the bottom octave in tune first, then you know your first finger D is in tune, and then the top octave. And when you have that, play the chord that you play D and A string together first, and slur that over to play A and E string. Practice that slowly and then speed it up. Then we have the beginning figure again. Here it comes, the, the D is no longer open string but second finger on G string. The point of that is for your ear to hear that it sounds exactly the same. It's an intonation thing again. There we go on to the E string. The E string part also practice that with drone. String crossing is double stop. What comes next is basically a G major scale in first position. also to practice the string crossings and double stops for a secure hand position. This scale comes four times in this etude with different bowings. 
because the next time we have it with the first two slur together. So practice the scale very carefully so that you can do it, so that you can then concentrate on the bowings. Now we have a cantilena passage with slurs. Use the whole bow and make sure you play with a really nice sound. And now we have two figures which are having a dialogue with each other. We have Now comes the answer. Now the first one repeats. And now the answer is slightly different. So here it's important to see it as two voices, perhaps like two singers in an opera. Again, with small variations. That's again like the beginning, but you have eight slurred. You need a lot of bow for that and make sure you have good contact to the string. Now we have the part where you're basically jumping between first and third position. You're not shifting. Shift requires a finger to remain in contact with the string. We don't have that here because we have an open string in between. So we have first position. And then when we play the A's, we go into third position. Control with the open D string that it's in tune. Stay in third position. Slight variation. Now we have the same G major scale again, but with different bowings. We have So keep good contact with the string and a good bow division. Four in the bottom half and four in the top half. And now we go into first position again. That's again, we're moving our fingers and we have an open D string in between. And now we go with the fourth finger onto the G string. That's a very good exercise for the fourth finger because it's moving all the time. It makes your fourth finger nice and strong. And then we go again without shifting because we have the open G string back into third position. Because it's both G's, it's easy to hear whether your G is correct or not. And to make completely sure, you can play it with the open G string together. And now we have... Next time it comes, we don't have E flat, but E. And now E flat again. And now double speed in eighth notes. That's a G major arpeggio. Practice that in double stops with drones. And then the 
chords in first position. Okay, I hope you have fun practicing this etude. It's a very valuable etude and you will become a lot more secure in third position. Make sure to always practice with a good sound because you have to practice sound as well as hitting the notes correctly. So just like you wouldn't allow yourself to leave an out of tune note standing without correcting it, also don't allow yourself to leave a note which doesn't have a nice sound standing without correcting it. Thank you.